Hey, what's up everybody? I'm Justin with americantrucks.com and today we're taking a closer look at and installing the SNB cold air with the reusable oiled filter available for all 2019 and newer 64 powered Ram 2500s. Now the SNB that we have on the table today would be an awesome choice for the gasser owners looking for one of the highest rated intakes currently available on the site at a very affordable price point to help provide a little bit more power and throttle response along with a more modified underhood appearance. Now the SMB will feature a durable ABS plastic build, reusable oiled filter, sealed enclosure, and will not require the use of any custom or can tuning. So some of your big features here, the SNB, and I mean big literally, will be the very nice molded sealed enclosure here, guys, with the included plexiglass window to allow you to keep an eye on quite possibly the largest filter in the category for your uh, 6.4 gasser powered HD at home. Now, when you're looking to help isolate the intake and more specifically that filter from the hot engine bay air, a sealed enclosure like this really is the only way to roll Heat is the enemy of performance, and something like this, again, will be your best bet at keeping that hot air from entering the filter and keeping your performance up at the same time. Now this kit, getting back to that filter, does include one of SNB's signature oiled filters here. Uh, traditionally, an oiled filter will flow a little bit better than a dry option, while only needing minor maintenance every 100,000 miles or so before a good cleaning and re-oiling is recommended, and that is according to the gang over at SNB. Now if you prefer not to mess with any of this, the re-oiling, or anything like that, SMB does offer a different kit with a dry filter instead, and uh, it will offer similar performance at the end of the day. Now, ultimately, if you do go with the oiled option here, uh, SMB claims that airflow should improve by nearly 37%, which in turn should lead to pretty solid power gains and better throttle response on your V8 powered HD, again, all without needing any additional tuning. But now let's talk a little bit more about your construction here, guys. We kind of talked a little bit about this earlier, but I did want to come back to the air box. It is ginormous and done so in a very high quality way. Molded air box here with the plastic is going to be very good at reducing heat soak, I should say. And again, is home to one of the largest filters here in the category. Now, topping off the air box will be the SNB etched plexiglass window here. That's going to be crucial in helping owners keep an eye on their filter quality over over the years, just make sure everything's nice and clean and does not need any additional maintenance. Now, finally, guys, the SB kit, they do include all of the hardware, of course, everything needed for a relatively easy install. Now, price point for the SNB is going to come in or around that $400 mark here, guys, which is honestly kind of the middle of the pack when looking at other intakes on the site for your HD. You can certainly go with more budget friendly options from some of your more budget friendly companies, if you will. But other options such as K&N, for instance, will round out maybe the higher end of the spectrum as well. Uh, a lot to check out in this category from budget friendly to expensive with the SMBs kind of landing in the middle. So if you want to get a better sense of what the category looks like, talk more about your dry versus your oiled filters, open versus sealed enclosures. Definitely check out the rest of our options here at AT because there is a lot to choose from. But if you wanted to go with a nice sealed enclosure with an oiled filter for not a ton of dough, listen, I know 400 bucks isn't exactly cheap at the end of the day, but I do think this is a really, really well-made kit for the money. All right, now let's shift our focus over to the installation. And site's gonna correctly call this a one out of three wrenches on the difficulty meter, taking you at least 30 minutes to complete from start to finish. Maybe a little bit more if this is your first time doing any wrenching on your Ram at home. But now we're gonna give you a little bit more insight on how the install might go down in the garage or driveway. So check out this detailed walkthrough from an AT customer now. So uh, part of the instructions is, is that it says that I need a flathead screwdriver. Uh, a 10 and 11 millimeter wrench or socket uh, with an extension possible. So what I've done is I've gotten out both of those and then at the end I'll show you which ones that I've actually used and which one is easier. Um, and also I have a 5 16 nut driver and what that'll be used for is uh, that'll be used for the hose clamps. So like I said, what I've already done is I've laid out all of the parts on the table and I've inventoried them. Um, I've laid them out from uh, A B, C, all the way through uh, the instructions, and uh, I verified that I have everything. 
So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get ready to dive into the truck and we're gonna go through it step by step following the instructions and you can see exactly how it gets installed into our pickup truck. So the very first thing in the instructions, it tells us to take the 10 millimeter socket and what we're gonna do is we're gonna disconnect the negative battery terminal cable. And what that does is that adds a layer of safety so that we don't uh, short circuit the truck or we don't hurt ourselves while we're working on this. So as we come over here, uh, the battery is gonna be right here. We're gonna take that, always disconnect the negative, make sure you don't drop the nut. And when you disconnect it, make sure that the cable is back away from the battery so that it doesn't reconnect itself. I always put the nut back onto the battery so that I don't lose it. Um, and then again, just double check, make sure that battery cable is gonna stay away. All right, so now power is disconnected from the vehicle. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the, the air scoop is fastened right here. Uh, and it's held in by these little plastic rivets. And it's very easy if you take a look there's a little notch into the side of those. And in that little notch, you just take your screwdriver, you pop it, just give it a little twist. Be sure you're gentle with it. Uh, once it comes up a little bit, you can grab it with your finger. Don't pull it too hard. You could break it. So I'm just gonna go through. And we're gonna gently pop all of these off. Now, one of the things that uh, s and recommends as part of their toolkit is a step stool. Uh, what I will tell you is that uh, I'm six foot two inches and I will need a step stool to get up in here. So I definitely recommend that. It's a lot easier than trying to stand on the bumper. Um, I just got a little two-step step stool that the wife and I keep in the house and that'll work just fine for what we're doing. Once the uh, center pin is out, you can go through, pop the rest of these out. What happens is that center pin will go in there and it swells these up so it keeps it in place. And now that that center pin's out, these pop right out of there. As you can see, there's not much to it. It's pretty easy. Anytime that I'm working on a project like this, it's always good to have a table nearby so you can put all your parts on it. And then once you reassemble everything, the goal is not to have any parts left over. Okay. Now that I've taken out all of those pins, uh, this should flop out of it, pull out of there. Okay, uh, there are two all the way here in the back. So we need to make sure that we get these two. They're back in here. There, now that we've got those out.
So what it was is a little hesitation here popping that off. And you always want to be gentle because you never know what's really holding it. Is there's a foam seal on the bottom of this that was, it was not glued to this, but it was stuck to it a little bit. So very gently, just put your hand underneath, give it a little pop, the whole thing pops right off. We're gonna remove the air scoop. So that's gonna require uh, a 10 millimeter socket and a wrench. So taking a look at that, the wrench is not the tool for this. It will be the 10 millimeter socket. So there are two bolts, one on each side. There's one here, and then there's one opposing over here. Again, make sure you keep a good hold of that so you don't drop it down into the engine. And we're gonna take this one off. So the next thing it has us do, it has us lift this up. Okay, there we go. So this is held together to this by these two little notches right here. So if you take that, pull this up a little bit, those will pop right off. Now we're able to remove that scoop and get it out of our way. Now the next thing it tells us to do is to remove the, the factory cover. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be removing this cover here. So what it tells us to do is pull up, pull forward, hear that snap as it comes out of those clips pull forward and the cover comes right off okay so now it has this uh, disconnect in the crankcase vent tube which will be this tube here it's on the back side of this uh, assembly it does have some wires attached to it um, it's very simple to undo that. There's a little knob right here. Push down on that, that clamp will open up. So you can move those wires right out of your way. Come in here. Give that rubber tube a little twist and I'm hoping it will work. There, there we go. Right up here at the uh, throttle body. This tube right here is, is gonna come apart from this black piece here. Again, just give it a twist. It's uh, dry rubber on dry plastic. It's gonna, it's gonna fight you a little bit, but not too bad. Just gently twist it, it'll come off. Okay. So next we're gonna remove the sensors. So this here is the sensor. And then, so it says to twist it counterclockwise and then pull it up. And there you go, the sensor is out. Uh, just be very careful with that. You can see down inside of there, there's a little sensor. Uh, we don't want to bend that. We want to make sure that we're saving that for later and then everything is good with it. Next, we're gonna remove these hose clamps that are holding all of this assembly together. So this is where I'll use my 5 16 nut driver. I'm gonna go down in here and grab a hold of this clamp. Loosen that up. Get it good and loose. That way it breaks free all the way around. Okay. So that part's... That part's loosened up. And 
Next thing it's asking us to do is using the uh, panel popper removal, uh, panel rivets securing the electrical harness to the air box. good grip on it so what it is is a flat piece of plastic inside of this there's some metal teeth in there to grab a hold of that plastic so you just kind of pop that apart a little bit it'll come out again I'm gonna hang it over top of this tube so that this sensor is not touching anything it doesn't matter if it touches something but I just want to make sure it doesn't get damaged okay so now what it is is this entire assembly is free uh, I do have to break free the hose from the throttle body as you're looking down on it. Um, you can see that down in here, this air box is held on to the vehicle by these, uh, these rubber grommets and these pins. So we're going to lift it up off the top of those pins. challenge is going to be getting this off the throttle body so mine seems to be stuck so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this other clamp off from uh, where the tube in the box meet usually they're not stuck as hard which I was correct on that and that will allow me to Get a different leverage on popping it as that rubber seal is kind of stuck on there. As you can see, the clamp is loose. There we go. Okay. So, it took me a little pushing, and uh, I don't know if you could hear it or not, but the rubber popped free from the aluminum housing from the throttle body. But what that does now. That allows me to take the whole box out of the assembly. Is now your throttle body is open. So make sure that we don't get any parts down in here um, or any debris, because that's what goes right into your engine. So we want to make sure we keep that clean. So pay attention to that. Yes, we're going to install the silicone seal onto the air box. So the seal, there's a little ledge down here. I uh, hope you can see that. So that little ledge right here is going to go into this groove. So we're going to pop that into that groove. Make sure that the the seal and the fit in the uh, box are lined up in the same shape. Once that pops down into there, here we go. Make sure it's popped into that groove really nice all the way around. And right, the next step that they tell us is we're going to install the silicone seal onto the air box. We have the, the lip on here. It's going to go with the little lip going into the box. Same thing, start it on one side, work your way around. You have a little bubble up here, but you just got to twist it, pop it in little by little. Then that last spot seems like it always fights you and then pops right in there we go seals installed okay the very next step is we're installing this tube onto the box uh, so that is just a matter of snapping that in kind of same thing start on one side there is room to twist this. It's not fastened in any way. It's just held in by the seal so that uh, once you get into the vehicle, you can line it better. Okay. 
Next thing is, is this is uh, for the air sensor. This is the one that has like a little key lock. Um, if you can see it, it's gonna go into this little key lock here to match that. Pop that in there. Really is that simple. Okay, next thing it calls for is this tube. Uh, this little tapered tube here, or two-step tube. Uh, the very first section, the bigger section, will go on to the tube that we just installed. And this is gonna be held down by the clamps. This is where you'll take your, your 516 nut driver, Open that up. So there's two sizes to this. The bigger one, of course, goes on the bigger section. Uh, we're gonna take that one. Now, what I would recommend is that we don't tighten it down until we're actually ready. One thing that I always like to do, and maybe it's my pet peeve, uh, I always like to make sure the clamps are pointed the same direction and roughly in the same location. And what that does is that, you know, if you ever have to get in there to do an uninstall or uh, you have to go in there and do some maintenance, uh, everything's in the same spot and you're not chasing the hose clamp around in circles trying to figure out where it is. Um, so we're going back we're installing the next step, which is this bracket. So this bracket is threaded, has a couple of inserts there. Uh, you got the nut and the bolt, reach up inside, bolt's gonna come through, and we'll get it tightened down onto the, or we'll get it installed into that. Make sure you always finger start them. These ones seem to be pretty easy to finger start. Uh, the reason you never mechanically start uh, start them is that if you get it cross threaded, you could destroy the bolt or the nut. You don't want to do that. So it's better off just uh, finger starting them and then going in with your, your ratchet or your wrench afterwards and tightening it down. That way you're ensured you're not, not cross threading it. Snug them up with my finger. Turn that around. So that one there will be the 11 millimeter socket. Uh, simple, just a ratchet. Take a look down inside of there. You can see those bolts. Just real quick, give them a little snug. Uh, the ratchet going through it. And I'm not gonna tighten them down really heavy yet, just in case I have to adjust that when it gets to the uh, truck here in a few minutes. One thing that uh, that I did like about this ins installation is the fact that it come with this cover. When it's hot outside, what you really wanna do is you wanna have this on. That way it's only sucking in the cool air from in front of the vehicle and not out of the engine compartment. So because we are going into our winter months here in Georgia, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave this one off and uh, come next spring, next summer, I will be installing that uh, as our temperatures get higher. So the next thing that we gotta do, we have to install some grommets. The first one will go into this piece here. Just a matter of, again, starting on one side, pushing it, it'll pop right in there. Same with the next hole. The third one goes into this bracket that we just installed. Give it a little twist if you have to to get it down in there. So here our box is assembled um, as far as we can go at the moment. Again, uh, we don't have anything that's super tight. Everything looks like it's ready to go. If you look down inside of the box, you can see the grommets that you just installed. Um, take a look at them. Make sure that it's uh, all the way popped out. Uh, I have one that uh, the seal here is uh, showing a little flat spot. Um, what I do is just give them a little twist and that'll seal the rest of the way in. So that way it'll, you ensure that that's all the way in, it's not gonna pop out on you later. What I'm doing is I'm taking the original, the, the factory air scoop, 
This is the one that uh, we took out earlier. And this is now going to attach to the scoop. You'll see that that rubber seal is going to fit nice and tight on there. It's going to lock that in. According to the install instructions, we're now ready to drop this into the truck. Um, so these grommets are going to line up with the uh, the ones we did earlier. And again, we get it. I didn't get that on all the way. It's a nice snug fit. Makes it a challenge to get on. But at the same time, proves that it's going to have a good seal. All right, so now we're going to drop this in. So, this is what it's going to start looking like. And like I said, you know, we have a lot of options here um, as far as moving things. So that's why it's so important not to tighten anything up yet. Now, let me, uh, let me bring this back out so I can give you a better view. So the three grommets that we just installed, um, if you take a look down inside of here, so one's going to go on to here, the other one to go on to this pin, and then the last one goes up into here. So those would be the three points that that, that box goes into. So we're going to slowly drop that in. Um, we got to make sure that the throttle body tube is lining up. So I'll tell you what, I'm going to remove the factory air scoop at the moment because it is in my way. Let's see how... This pops down in there. Okay. So what I just discovered is that if you uh, kind of tilt this up a little bit, kind of look underneath, you can align them holes a little bit better. Once you get two of them aligned, the third one pops right in there. There you go, it's set down in. All right, now come around to the side here, take a look with me. And again, with the factory air out of the way, um, what you'll see is the throttle body hose that I've got to hook up. That's this one right here. And again, like I said in the beginning, you know, we're able to turn this. That's a great thing because now I can line it up. I can twist it where I need it, where it fits the best. I'm going to drop that in there and give it a little wiggle. I'm going to reach my hand down in there. Again, make sure it's nice and clean so that you don't get anything in the throttle body. I may have uh, tightened that clamp up just a little bit too much, so where it attaches the throttle body to give it some flex. So I'm gonna loosen that up a little bit. There it goes. Popped right down in. Again, you can see this hose here. Now lines right up with the uh, the S and B part. Just give it a couple wiggles. Feel around to the bottom, make sure it slid in all the way. There we go. That part's in. Now, I want to take the factory uh, air scoop back. And I know the instructions say to put it on before, but for me, it was a lot easier just to do that. I took that off. I was able to put that in, it's out of my way. Um, but now I can bring this in. I can give it a few wiggles. Get it lined up with the original factory holes.
So now that we had that lined up, we're gonna take the 516 nut driver. We're gonna tighten up these clamps. Now, what I say is that, especially on a clamps like these, tighten them up just enough so that you see the rubber move, but you don't want it squishing out all over the place. You want a nice snug fit. Keep that airflow going, but uh, you don't want it so tight that you're damaging the rubber either. So, good and snug, there we go. That was the 10 millimeter sockets that, that, that you needed to do that. And these are the two that go right here. And again, highly recommend the ratchet extension uh, to do that install. I never do is I, I never tighten up a bolt until I have all the bolts in so that's why I came back to that one double check it they're snug they are not tight so everything's good to go there okay everything looks like it's fitting good it looks like it's sealed good these clamps are tight hoses reinstalled okay what I'm gonna do I'm gonna install the air filter goes in here on the on uh, this part that we installed earlier, which is now sticking through. Uh, so you'd be able to see that. The filter is gonna go over top of this and grab a hold of that. It really just pops on. So what I'm gonna do is slide it on the top of that. And then I'm gonna let it go down. And going down, should be able to push that onto after I missed it take your 5 sixteenths <laughs> nut driver loosen up the clamp silly me I'll make that going a lot easier okay then once you loosen up the clamp pops right on there you go your up filters installed um, I'm going to move that clamp around so that it'll always be easy to get at. And then I'm going to snug that down. Same thing as before. Tighten it so that, uh, you know, it, it feels tight. It's, it may, you may start to see a little bit of rubber smush out, but uh, uh, just go until it's snug. Give the filter just a little tug. Feel all the way around it. It's on all the way around. Next thing that we got to do is we've got to reconnect the sensor. Again, be careful of this tip. It is going to go in. It's going to turn. There you go. It's locked in. This clamp. Oops. This clamp right here. I'm going to put it back around that tube. Lock that in. That keeps that wire from going down, chafing on anything that might be in the engine compartment. Uh, I definitely recommend that it routes behind this tube, and that'll what that'll do is that'll keep that out of the way. All right, Let's double checking to make sure nothing's loose down in there. Everything's looking good. Okay. Next thing I got to do is I'm going to reinstall the engine cover. So the engine cover. In reverse of what it was before what it is is uh see these two little tubes right here uh once you get it out you'll look back inside of there and you'll see that there are two grommets that it goes into so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to tilt it up we're going to slide it back into those grommets and then drop it down and then when we drop it down it snaps into these two here and that's what holds all of this together so remember 
slide it back. You'll feel it go in. Go down. Best way to gauge it, a little cap lined up. There we go. Two little snaps. Nothing snapped in. There we go. Good. All right. Next step. Just putting the uh, original factory uh, toweling cover back on. Um, what you'll want to do is, what I do is I slide in one end that goes in behind this fender. The other side goes in behind the fender also. But if you'll take this, you'll bend it just a little bit. It'll go in behind there easily, straightened out, sets right back down in. What you end up with is when we took all these pins out, so these are the ones that go into the cowling. Just really just snap them in. Uh, put them all in there. Then, what we can't forget, because there was two inside, we got that one, and we got this one here. And that's the last of them. Then we take the, uh, the other pins, push them down inside, and what that does is that uh, spreads it you know, locks all of that in place. Only go one way so make sure that you're not forcing it extra hard Next step is, is this gets a cover over top of this. Uh, what that does is that helps seal up uh, the filter area and keep the engine heat out, kind of like what we talked about on the side area. So inside of the grommet, I'll just gently lay this down here so that I can demonstrate it better. Inside of the grommet, there's a groove. The Lexan piece is gonna install inside of this groove and that's what's gonna hold that there. And then this whole assembly will pop down into the uh, box that we just assembled and put into the trunk. So just like all the rest of the grommets, highly recommend you start at one end. Just work your way around don't uh, don't try to force it all at one time because then it'll never work uh, but if you start at one side you just keep going around the circle uh, around the perimeter and we'll end up with there's this last little bit that we have to stretch and what I did is I put my thumb underneath that to lift it up I'll do the same over here, peel it back a little bit, snap it in over the edge. There we go. So this is the cover that we're going to put over top of the box.
what we're going to do is we're going to install this cover. So just like just like with the rest of the rubber grommets, we start at one edge, we lock it into that groove, and we just slowly work our way around. There we go. Snap down in. Everything looks good and tight. You don't see any gaps. You don't feel any gaps. All right, last step of the puzzle. We're gonna reconnect the battery. It's just the opposite of what we did before. Make sure you keep a hold of that nut. It's very easy to drop that down inside. Uh, let the spark get you. Um, you hook that up, drop that cable down on. And again, this was the 10 millimeter socket. All right. You wanna tighten it down, but don't torque it down. Don't, don't put a lot of pressure on it. So guys, if you are looking to help make your 2019 and newer 6.4 powered gasser HD breathe a little bit easier, all while improving filtration and throttle response at the same time, then be sure to check out this oiled system from SNB right here at americantrucks.com.